the Holy Spirit does not operate outside of the revealed Word of God. again to my channel if you are joining me for the first time i would implore that you click on the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss out from subsequent videos and for those that have been with me from day one and also subsequently i mean if you have not if you've joined me before this video i would say you're welcome once again i hope i'm actually creating some value for you today we have yet another guest with me is a dear brother, his name is Obong Brown, and we'll be discussing very quickly on um, an important issue or a question that is usually on the minds of people. They are act act sometimes actively on the minds of people, sometimes subconsciously, and it affects the way we do life, particularly as Christians. You're welcome, brother Brown. Um, thank you, brother. I mean, it's, it's, it's great to be here. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad um, to speak to your audience. I believe I meet an amazing audience looking at the things that you've put up. Um, it's been equipping, it's been exalting, and it's been correcting. Mm. Yeah, so um, I'm glad to be here. I'm hopeful that it's correct. <laughs> and I hope to, to give value yes, at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, brother. So, to the business of the day. There's always business for everything. Yes, to the business of the day. Um, there is something about the Bible. Okay. The Bible is generally seen amongst Christians as the Word of God. Right? Yeah, the Word of God, generally speaking. We don't want to go into um, okay, the inspiration or this. Of course, from what we might say, by implication, we might say or make okay. reference to that. We don't want to go into all that, but we, we are, we, at least both of us, we understand that the Bible is God's word. It is. This is an infallible, um, inerrant, authoritative word of God. It is. And so I want to go to the aspect that speaks to the fact that the Bible is the final authority as it pertains to the faith of the believer mm -hmm. and the practice of the believer. So everything that has to do with our lifestyle living the bible is sufficient so what does it mean and what does it not mean or in another way i would ask does the bible have all the answers well um it even with me for to I, I like the fire as it just went in <laughs> went straight in but yes that, that's actually just the question does the bible have all the answers when you when we look at issues and areas of our lives and everything there are some people that have, that they compartmentalize the Bible's relevance, mm. they say, okay, the Bible, according to the circumstances yes, in their life. Yes, there's an extent to which the Bible is valuable. But you say, when it comes to real life, then the Bible should come down first. We are talking about real thing now. It's not about, so, does the Bible have all the answers? Right. I think before we move into the question of whether the Bible has the answers or not, um, when we face, you know, the challenge of how much you know, the Bible means to us, mm. how much the Bible can shape our lives. It's a question of, is there a question of what is in the Bible? It's a question of um, the, the position of our hearts, mm. the, dis the disposition of our hearts rather, um, more like um, who do we fear? Who do we worship? Who do we revere? Mm. Who do we live our lives after? If we say that the answer to that question is God, that is God is um, what we desire after, God is who we worship, God is who we live for, then there's going to be an issue when we um, try to choose what part of the scripture to live to and what part of the scripture not to live to. Much more, how much this, this scripture is um, instructive in the areas of our lives. Mm -hmm. Is it some areas or is it all areas? Mm -hmm. You know. So that's the first question we need to answer or any Christian need to answer when coming to finding out whether or not the Bible has all the answers. Mm. Do you have a heart that is after God? Mm. And the answer is yes. And I think we are halfway through you know, the journey of 
answering this question. So to, to pinch to pinch the head of, of the question, um, in your introduction, I think you, you, you mentioned that I mean we are not here to, to debate on the authenticity, mm-hmm. the inspiration of the scripture. That should be already um, a base belief for any Christian that the Bible is the inherent you know word of God. If the it's the finality of everything you could ever have. Mm-hmm. There's no surer testament mm-hmm. you know of God than from the scriptures. Yeah. And we find in First John that um, they that say that they love the Lord do what? Keep his commands. Now the next question that would ordinarily occur to a well-thinking man is, where do I find, or what is God's command? And where can I find God's command? More importantly, how mm. you know, can I meet uh, God's commands? Mm. You know, so it falls back to the foundation of that conversation. Mm that we cannot struggle with the scripture. We struggle with the scriptures. I mean, it, it could mean that we are struggling with God mm-hmm. because there is no God outside of the scripture and there is no scripture outside of, mm-hmm. of God. These two things, you know, they, they work simultaneously. Although that could be for, for another time, some people actually um, try to separate God from the scriptures. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't have a problem if they are not professing Christians. Definitely. Yeah. Not a problem at all. But the problem yes. is that some people try to bring, uh, try to separate God from the Bible to make it look like there's something man-made about the Bible and so there's still something once you have the Holy Spirit, there's something the impressions or the way he leads mm. you is even of more um, of more authority mm. than the Bible so we, that's even the real issue not necessarily those who don't believe what so sadly, for the Christians, for yes. the Christians and some people it, 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 we, I don't want us to take it for granted that uh, people believe that um, that the Bible and God's word cannot be separated. Where well, it's sad that the reality for many Christians is that they try to relegate, they have a very low view of, of the, the Bible, word of God, yeah. and they try to make it look like God is dead, yes, and the Bible is something that contains God's word, or is something that we are not supposed to be rigid, like, don't worship the Bible as if we are trying to say God is not like we are worshiping the Bible. They, they put it, they, they caricature um, our high view of the Bible by trying to make it seem as if we are saying we put Bible and we are saying we worship you, we worship you. But we are saying you cannot separate the being from his words. Mm. You cannot separate, I cannot separate you from your words. Now, how can you? I mean, you are a reflection or you are a, an expression, your words are an expression of who you are. So God's word is an expression of who he is. Mm. In fact, we cannot know anything beyond God or about God yeah. apart from that yeah. which he has revealed to Definitely. us. Except so if if we now have a, a question about whether it is what he has revealed to us, then that's a different uh, argument or issue entirely. But if we have come to believe God's word, I'm just trying to buttress yeah. that you cannot... And to build on that, I mean, the, the argument, I can imagine... Um, since we consider the scripture to be, I mean, for, for people that make the argument that the scripture is um, a man-made um, phenomenon, you know, you ask, you bet the question, why do we not have a duplicity of, of, <laughs> of books like the Bible? Mm. I mean, why don't we have them spread across history? Why don't we have a book that is written across many generations mm. by many people mm. and still in the same thing? Mm. So if, if that phenomenon as as common as you know the people that argue for that you know make it um it, it does not it begs the question mm. of why we don't have you know the multiplicity mm. of such books mm. you know and finally to to even um to corroborate the conversation i mean you have established earlier on um the holy spirit bears testimony he bears witness to the fact that christ came Christ lived, Christ died, he resurrected, and he ascended. Mm. And um, as good Christians, what we will learn is that um, the, Bible, the, the Holy Spirit does not operate outside of the revealed Word of God. That is to say that um, if the Scripture has said, Thou shalt not commit murder, mm. let's use that basically, and um, you think or you believe, you have an impression from... Mm. A spirit, um, I'm very careful not to qualify it as the Holy Spirit, yeah. even an impression by a spirit asking you to murder. You know, the first thing you should do is reconcile your feeling with the authoritative word of God. 
And wherever you find what right you feel, divided. yes. <laughs> and wherever you find what you feel, wherever you find what you think, you impress, whatever um, adjective you want to ascribe to mm-hmm. your your you know experience, mm-hmm. and it does not you know corroborate with what the scripture teaches. I mean, I would advise you to, to not just advise, but as the scripture would say, you should ignore you know such um, supposed revelations mm-hmm. or conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, the scripture is more than just the word of God mm. for the Christians. Mm. The scripture is the way of life mm. for the Christians. Mm. That is to say that um, if I say I'm a professing Christian and I believe in the word of God, mm. that, that word of God is not just the guide for my life. Mm. It is mm. my life. Mm. Uh, I do not live outside of what the scripture teaches me. Mm. me uh, what I strive to do is to live within what the scripture has said about, about me, you know. And I mean, we're in a generation, generation where we ask a lot of questions about jobs, ask a lot of questions about relationships, mm. ask a lot of questions about um, careers, mm. questions about appetites, mm. desires, you know, visions, dreams, pebbles. Mm. And if we cannot reconcile all of these elements into what the scripture has defined for the believer, mm. how can we see that we are professing Christians? Mm. So um, I'm sure we have not gotten to the, the, the crux mm. of whether the Bible has all the answers, but just to establish mm. the foundation that if we say we are Christians, um, it means that, I mean, for us to say we are Christians, it means that we believe in God, mm. not just any God, mm. but the God mm. of the Bible, creator of the universe, mm. you know, the, the, un, the uncausable cause, mm. right? And um, the evidence that we believe in him is that we love him, and the evidence that we love him that we follow mm. his commands. Mm. And I think that's, that's the junction we are, we, are, we are in now. And the Bible, you know, we conform our lives to the scripture. We don't conform the scripture to our appetites, to our desires, to mm. what we want. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's the, that's the very ground for which we can even, I mean, build this um, conversation. Yes. So, going to the question now. Well, does okay. the Bible have all the answers? So, you might have different approaches to answering it, but mm. there's still going to be um, a sameness in the um, point that we are trying to make about how the Bible is final authority for the Christian's faith and practice. So, does it have all the answers? Um, we can answer that implicitly, and we can answer that explicitly. Okay. Um, in the sense that there are things that are very explicit for the Christian. I mean, thou shalt not fornicate, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Um, not just because they are based on the Ten Commandments. I mean, we see all of those scattered kind of across the New Testament. Mm-hmm. How we are called to live. Mm-hmm. I mean, whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is, you know, think on these things. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the instruction. And even more so, when we look at the fruit of the, 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 fruit of the Spirit, mm-hmm. we begin to see virtues mm-hmm. that should be, um, that should be, Reconcilable with our Christian life, mm. that if we do not possess this virtue, we can, I mean, we can authoritatively question mm. whether we possess mm. the Holy Spirit. We have love, we have peace, we have, we have joy. So, from the basic understanding of the virtues, you know, ascribed to the Christian life, you can already pick mm. the things that you are not to be involved in. Mm. For example, um, I mean, you're in a situation where it requires you to. To go into immoral environment, maybe not immoral in the sense that the entire the environment in and of itself is immoral, mm-hmm. but the conditions mm-hmm. in that environment would always expose you to immoral things. Mm-hmm. A Christian who believes in the word of God mm-hmm. will not allow himself or herself mm-hmm. to find you know uh, to, to be in such positions mm-hmm. because what you are doing is that you are I mean you are presenting yourself forth mm-hmm. to the forces of this world, the devil in particular, to to make to make mess you know out of you so explicitly there are so many things that are made clear for the christians and we should forgive i mean and the forgiveness is not a dependent it's not a dependent, a dependent variable mm-hmm. it is not that once you do this i will forgive it is that whether or not you know it happens you should do what forgive mm-hmm. and it's an instruction also uh, about you know the nature of the um, nature of the problem of the issue I mean, you speak to your brother first about it. Mm. If your brother does not um, accept you, call me an extra person. Mm. 
that was not work. You take the person to the church. Mm. So we don't just I mean, we're in the social media age, mm. and we are we are easily you know um, annoyed mm. or provoked mm. or agitated on specific specific issues. Mm. Why do we rush as Christians to talk about these issues online publicly? Mm-hmm. You know, saying that oh, so, so, so brother, so, so brother, you know, have been doing this and so and so things. You know, and sometimes in, in, in trying to be smart, we do not, you know, mention the names, mm. but we know that we are saying this towards mm. these persons when we have not allowed mm. the Bible to guide us mm. in how to resolve conflict, which is talk to your brother first mm. about it, particularly when the deed was not even in the context of the public. Um, and view exactly yeah. Yeah. something happened within you guys and you're bringing it out there rather than that. i mean it's understandable if you are reacting to that which was already is in the context of the public view and so it is publicly refuted or corrected mm. compared to something your brother within your sister someone something within and you bring it out there rather than following what the Bible clearly teaches about the approach you should take if you want Reconciling to reconcile conflict exactly so 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 the Christian that struggles with, oh, this brother wronged me, you know, um, forget the Bible. No, we cannot forget the Bible. Absolutely not. We cannot forget the Bible because there are explicit, explicit things that the Bible has made clear mm-hmm. for the Christian mm-hmm. to live by. Mm-hmm. Now, um, in our age, there is, there is there's a crease that, I mean, that we have all the information, we are wiser, we are smarter, we are more knowledgeable. Although we can't see that in our daily living, but let's imagine that that's the case. <laughs> and there are some things that it looks like the Bible did not, you know, provide answer. But I mean, that's the difference between God <laughs> and any other being. God is perfect. He is all knowing. Yes. So whatever is going to happen in 2090, God had foreknowledge of it, <laughs> and because He He planned, you know, according to His purpose. That is going to give us the word of God. Mm. He made sure that no matter the time and age and circumstance, everything you need to live a life worthy of Him mm. is made available. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about social media, for example. You know, we want to delve into the implicit things. You know, people say, "Oh, um, the Bible doesn't say anything about social media." So I mean, I'm going to go ahead and use it the way I want it. <laughs> you know, but then you find the Scripture will say things. That will point you to, to what you are supposed to be using social media for, mm-hmm. or how long mm-hmm. you should be using it for. Um, the Bible says you should not have any other God mm-hmm. aside from me, mm-hmm. or you should not make an idol of any other thing. Mm-hmm. So, what is an idol? What is an idol, basically? The Bible does not necessarily tell you um, phone, exactly, and everything. But the fact that anything that takes a place of primary importance or significant importance aside to God and how God wants you to is already an idol. So that already puts many things into that box yeah. without the Bible mentioning those things. Phone, relationship, um, sex, and sex, that yes. kind of thing. So the Bible might not speak to it directly, but implicitly it is already speaking to it and, and that's an important point. Yes. So three things, I think, so, so uh, as, as we draw the curtain on this conversation, three things. One, um, does the Bible have all the answers? I would, I would <laughs> permit me to say yes. Okay. Right? And I'm saying yes on these three grounds. One, it does explicitly. Explicitly in the things that it's boldly clearly written in the scriptures of what is demanded in the life of a Christian. Mm-hmm. Implicitly in terms of the surrounding facts, the surrounding conditionings mm-hmm. given to the in, for Christian living. Mm-hmm. And thirdly, which is ultimately the reason for our living mm-hmm. is to glorify God. And what it has planted in us, we have his word in our hearts. Mm. And I mean, we can deceive another person, but if we get to the point where we are deceiving ourselves, mm. we are in big trouble, mm-hmm. right? As far as we have the heart of God, mm. and you know that what you are doing does not glorify God. Mm. I mean, you are in for it. Mm-hmm. You, are, you are deliberately going against the word of God. Mm-hmm. So there are things that the Bible has explicitly said based on, you know, the, the verses of the scripture, mm-hmm. there are things that have been implicitly said because of the conditionings mm-hmm. given for the Christian living. And thirdly, the Christian must always live mm-hmm. to the word, to the glory of God. So there's no how you go through these three channels. 
that you will not agree. Mm. And ultimately, the Bible does what? Have answers. According to all things. Thank you so much. I would also, uh, I would want to add without, um, that in conclusion from my, from my own end, that the Bible indeed has all the answers, but I would want to qualify what answers means. It means that as it pertains to salvation, sin, and the glory of God, mm. the Bible has all the answers. And if we are being honest, the reality of sin mm. is in everything we do. Yes. And so the Bible has the answers it on does. how we should live, how we relate with one another. I mean, we are a society because we have human beings relating with one another. That's true. It's at the point of relating and even with ourselves that there is sin. You sin against other people or you sin against, of course, everything is against God ultimately. Mm. Either the one you do within yourself or the one you do without. And some also in, in in relation to creation people and creation mm -hmm. and all that and so with that we cannot deal with it till we die and so the bible has all the answers regarding that mm -hmm. oh the bible has the answer regarding salvation there's no other name or, or by which you will say they said through jesus yeah. it says jesus is the way the truth and the life and so what does it mean it means that for salvation how we can resolve eternity mm -hmm. the bible has the answer how we can deal with the reality of sin the bible has the answer how we can glorify God, the Bible has the answer. And it's, just, it's not just an answer, it is the answer. The answer. And so, yes, the Bible has all the answers. I also qualify answers as the very thing that God wants us to know, mm. the Bible has it. Mm. What am I saying? Am I saying the Bible teaches mathematics? No. Mm. The Bible, those things are, yeah, anything that has to do with the creation, with, with creation or that doesn't bother on salvation, sin, and glory of God. In fact, I would even categorize that, that anything we learn as we improve, as we advance in technology, mm. everything must be from a disposition of the desire to glorify God. Yes. And so even if there are some things that are not bad in themselves, but we are not convinced, we are not convicted, we don't, it's not from a heart of worship and a heart to glorify God, we are doing it wrong. We are. We are sinning because the whole thing, the whole essence of our being is to give God pleasure. The whole essence of our being is to glorify God. And so, yes, the Bible has the answers in that regard. Are we saying it now it has the answers about where you should go tomorrow or where you should not go tomorrow? No, no, no that's not what we are saying. We are saying that as it pertains to life and godliness, as it pertains to salvation, sin, and the glory of God, it has all the answers. And all these things you cannot do without in every aspect of your life. And that's, that's right. why you see that the Bible is indeed sufficient. I mean, I think that covers it. So we are not saying that the Bible contains phone, that, mm. they, that they will build phone next week, mm. or that will do it. No, that's not what we are saying. We have qualified the answers. And so, when we qualify the answers, the real problems, the, real, the issues that people truly have, more often than not, borders on the things that the Bible actually addresses. Let me borrow, let me borrow um, an illustration from um, Paul Washer. Okay. Um, I think he was talking about his salvation journey, and he said when he was on, when he was one of his missionary journeys. Mm -hmm. That I think um, we were trying to talk about we, what we know it as is cement, you know, mm. the mold that mm. you used to make the cement. Yeah. That whatever you put inside that mold, mm. what comes out will be in the shape mm. of that mold, mm. right? Mm. So you cannot put the <laughs> doesn't matter, doesn't matter the amount of cement or sand you put inside, mm. provided the shape of that mold is definite, mm. what is going to come out? Mm. Yes. So the word of God is like that mold. Mm. Mm. There is something. That we should be resultant in the fact that we have interacted mm -hmm. with the mood. Mm -hmm. So if the result we are producing is different from the shape of the mood, mm -hmm. then we can question whether at all we were mm -hmm. in the mood. Yes, that, that would be to conclude. I think I think that I will not have to add anything. Mm -hmm. So the Bible is simply if you want to even glorify God, mm -hmm. right? What did Jesus how I mean, what what helps us to know how to glorify God? If not God's word. Because we cannot know it better than the Creator Himself. Yeah. We cannot it's just like love me the way I want you to love me. That's not the matter with God. No. God has defined the way He wants to be worshipped, how yes. He wants to be loved, and how He wants to be. I mean, right. And so we have no escape when it comes to the Bible. As a Christian, the Bible is indeed sufficient. And that's how we'll be ending our conversation. It's good to have you. I, I, I feel this will be the first of many. 
I well, well, I mean, well, I mean I'm at your break, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. And if you have, please, and you have not turned on the notification bell, subscribe, please, and turn on the notification bell so that you can enjoy more videos. And please interact, ask questions, and give feedback. Thank you, and see you some other time. Oh,